the dreaded crosswind landing. As if learning to land wasn't hard enough by itself, we also have to sometimes account for the fact that the wind is working against us too. A landing where the wind is right down the center line, as the windsock here at Ingalls Field shows it, involves us keeping the nose of the aircraft parallel with the center line and keeping that center line directly below us as we round out into our landing. We use our rudders to maintain center line and ideally very minimal aileron usage as there's no need to correct for wind drift. Now, with a crosswind, with the windsock indicating a strong wind blowing from left to right as we approach on final, being lined up as we were before is going to cause us to get pushed off to the right side of the runway. We need to make an adjustment. A simple adjustment we might try is to line up or aim to the left of the center line in such a way that the wind ends up pushing us onto the center line by the time we arrive. If this seems to be too clever by half and almost feels like cheating, it is. Even though we've accomplished both goals of being on center line and aligned with it, our momentum is still carrying us to the right. When we land this momentum and the wind impacting the bottom of our left wing will cause a load to be placed on the right main gear. The left wing can be lifted up a bit and we can drift off the center line further. In a heavy wind or in a tailwheel aircraft, we can even risk flipping over or looping the plane on the ground. The simple fact that our wheels are pointed straight down the center line isn't enough to overcome the inertia from the wind drift. We need to not only be pointed down the center line, we need to fly along the center line prior to touchdown. But as we saw in the first example, we can't fly down the center line in a crosswind without getting pushed off to the side. What adjustment do we need to make? If you've worked with your instructor on ground reference maneuvers, you could probably guess what that adjustment will look like. We have the wind coming from left to right across the screen. We talk about an extended center line, that is, an imaginary line we can draw with our mind's eye that extends the actual runway center line out onto the final approach course. We'd like to align our aircraft with that line. As we approach from a right base, we'll time our turn onto final so that we roll out with that imaginary line right underneath us. In order to stay on that line, though, we need to point our aircraft into the wind. This is called crabbing into the wind, moving sideways just like a crab does. The stronger the crosswind, the more of a drift correction we'll need. This is an awkward way to fly. On final approach, we're used to looking straight ahead and seeing the runway right in front of us. But with a crab correction, it's off to the side. The best way to visualize this is to picture the extended center line pointing right underneath your butt as you fly along it. It's helpful to pick out some ground references like trees that are on this extended center line and work to keep your butt over them. In this way, we ignore where the nose is pointed and focus just on the direction our butts are moving relative to the ground. So that's how we'll hold the extended center line on final, but we can't land the aircraft in this crab position. We're on the center line, which is one of our goals, but with the nose pointed askew, the aircraft will want to move that direction even though our momentum is carrying us straight, causing side loads on the gear and a dangerous shimmying. Again, this is more dangerous the windier it gets, and especially in tailwheel aircraft where the CG is behind the main gear. So before we touch down, the nose will need to be pointed down the center line. Again though, the wind wants to push us off, so we'll need to account for that too so that at the time we touch down, we're on the center line, moving parallel with the center line, with the nose pointed down the center line. At some point, this requires us to come out of our crab approach. There's two ways to do this. First of all, as we approach on final in this crab with the nose pointed left into the wind, we can align the nose of the center line right away. First by using right rudder to move the nose to the right, and then by using left aileron to bank the wings into the wind. Most of the time we're taught to move the rudder and ailerons the same way, but this time we're doing the opposite, using rudder away from the wind and aileron into the wind. This is called a side slip. If this seems a bit like walking and chewing gum at the same time, that's okay. Just remember that the rudder is used to point the plane parallel with the center line. The aileron is used to keep your butt over the center line. If the aircraft nose swings left or right, we can use rudders to realign with the center line. If the aircraft drifts to the left or right of the center line, we'll adjust our aileron input to correct. It takes a lot of trial and error to find the right amount of rudder input to hold yourself parallel, as well as the right amount of aileron to keep your butt over the extended center line. But one major advantage of this method of approaching is that we're already positioned for the landing touchdown. Let's compare this to the second method. This time, we're going to keep our crab in for most of the approach. We're not concerned with keeping the nose pointed down the runway. We're only looking to keep our butts on top of the extended centerline. 
We'll correct for drifting left or right of the center line by moving the controls in unison, just as we would in any other phase of flight. In reality, small corrections can be done solely with the rudder. Think of this just like taxiing. We use rudders to keep us on the center line. The only difference is that we're not also pointed down the center line. Larger corrections will require aileron input, but you should be much more active on the rudders here. Now, as we said, we can't land in the crab, so regardless of whether we use the side slip method or the crabbing method, at some point we will have to align our nose with the center line. So here, if we've approached in the crab method, we'll need to switch over to the side slip by bringing the nose right and the wings left. And now we're getting ready for our round out and touchdown with the left wing, the upwind wing, down, and the rudder keeping us aligned. We begin the round out by bringing the yoke back. As we do this, our airspeed is bled off. With less air moving over the control surfaces, the ailerons and rudder are less effective. So to maintain this side slip, we'll need increasingly larger inputs on both the rudders and the ailerons. This is the real challenge of the crosswind landing. It's unfortunately not enough to find the correct rudder and aileron inputs early out on the approach and just maintain them. We're chasing a moving target. The slower we get, the greater our inputs need to be to get the same job done. If we've done it right, we should touch down on the left main gear first. The wind and our center of gravity will be pushing the aircraft towards that right main gear, still in the air. This is how we avoid the side load we saw in the earlier examples when we landed with the two main gear wheels at the same time. Next, the right main gear will come down, and lastly, the nose gear will touch. In the landing rollout, we have to bring in more and more aileron into the wind to prevent drift while using the rudder to hold center line as we normally would. Realistically, what this looks like over the runway is that our feet are working extra hard to keep the aircraft over the center line. These are small adjustments, which the rudder is much better at handling than the ailerons are. As we get pushed left or right, we're counteracting with the rudders to maintain center line on a parallel bearing. We'd love to touch down on the center line, but it's far more important that we touch down parallel to it as well. So keep that in mind. If it's really tough to hold that white paint, just make sure the nose is parallel with the center line when you touch down. The aileron should only be used here to keep the left wing, the wing that's on the side of the wind, down. Intuitively, though, we want to control the aircraft by driving left and right with the aileron, but its main job is keeping that left wheel down. I think of this like dipping a toe in a hot bath. I'll dip it in and out as I feel out how much is just enough to keep that wheel down for the touchdown. Many people will argue which method is best for a landing, the side slip or the crab. It's really up to you, and it's taught both ways by instructors. The side slip has the benefit of allowing you to be set up for the touchdown early on, but it requires a lot more control inputs as you're managing both the ailerons and rudders for the entire length of final approach. The crab method has the advantage of being a bit easier to manage as you're just focused on keeping your butt above center line using the rudder, but you'll need to kick out of the crab into the side slip and you'll have less time to figure out the proper inputs to hold it. I tend to prefer coming in in a crab and kicking out, but I rely on a bit more familiarity with what the proper control input should feel like at that moment of truth. And this takes some time to develop. Practice these with your instructor to get a feel for what works best for you. If you can master the crosswind landing, you've got by far the hardest task in your pilot training accomplished. Thanks for watching. Flight Insight offers training just like in this video for private and instrument ground school, as well as other special courses like glass cockpit and radio communications. We have a ton of extra resources for you at our website. Check it out at flight-insight.com.